What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jeremy Wormy. I'm coming at you with another video and today we're continuing to actually talk about Warhammer 40k. Now for those of you who aren't aware in Warhammer 40k recently Games Workshop decided to come out and make a female custody which goes against the established lore as of right now and they didn't just retcon the female custody here. They didn't just come out and try to retcon it. They came out here and gaslit the fans and treated the fans like pure garbage, like they didn't know what they were talking about. Now, when it comes to Warhammer 40k lore, the lore is written in such a way that it does make it roughly easily susceptible for retcons. It's designed that way. It's designed to do stuff like that. You're dealing with the 41st millennia or 42nd millennia of mankind. I, I'm still getting more and deeper and deeper into the lore itself and uh not perfect on it by far i'm far from perfect on any of this right now still learning as i go but when it comes to the actual lore it's written in such a way because information's been lost information has been scattered some information gets purposely held down you you get it okay that's kind of how it's designed to be kind of unreliable easy to be uh manipulated so on and so forth that when it comes to adding in a female custody, I honestly think you could have done it. I think you could have probably done it after learning how the lore works. The thing is, though, you gaslit the audience, you gaslit your fans, you treated your fans like garbage, and because of that, the, the controversy sparked. People have been pushing back against it. People have been calling it out. You've also had former Games Workshop employees actually attacking the fans. Former Games Workshop employee Nick Davis attempts to defend companies Adeptus Custodes retcon. There was no such thing as fact. He's right. There's no such thing as fact, but it doesn't just go to the retcon itself. It always goes to how the customers were being treated, how the fans were being treated, and how the people that actually helped make Warhammer 40k profitable and enjoyable for all were being treated outright. You also had Warhammer 40k fan sites attacks players as bigots for disliking female Adeptus Custodes. This is another one of the gas lights that was going on. You had the one of their largest fan sites come out and post a blog that basically said that if you're against this, you are a bigot, completely downplaying the actual issue, completely ignoring what the actual situation was that was going on, but, and by doing so, they gaslit the audience more. The drama is not, like I've said in every single one of my videos, is not just the retcon. The retcon could have happened, as I have formally stated, as of right now, you could have found a way to do it, uh, all sorts of crazy ways it, it would have been hard it would have taken work but they didn't do it right they didn't care to even attempt it right they just did it and then they gaslit the audience by saying that the female custodies were always there from the beginning which was not true you just had to do work you actually had to put in effort and because games workshop wasn't willing to put in the actual effort to do that people called it out people got annoyed and by people calling it out you now have the people that are defending it that like the ideological change that like what's going on right now coming out and simply saying well you're all just bigots you're all just sexist you're all just homophobes so on and so forth you know doing what they usually do when they talk about this stuff we have also had numerous warhammer players cancel their subscription and announce a boycott of games workshop after announcement of female adeptus custodies which is a big one for those of you who don't realize this warhammer is a very pricey game very very pricey i've been uh you know telling a lot of people hey i wanted to get into warhammer 40k would have been maybe back in like the christmas era i wanted to start getting into it so i went to a game uh hobby shop i took one look at the uh price of your starting army for orcs or for whatever i wanted at the time took one look at that price and said i could buy three gumpla with this price it is a very expensive hobby it is a very pricey hobby and because of that it is a gate kept hobby it is a hobby that is designed to be very much gate kept just by the price bar alone there is a barrier to entry to get into this hobby from the get-go and because of that when you get start pissing off your audience when you start pissing off your fans when you have your fans finally saying you know what that's enough we're done with this we don't want any part of this when they're coming out and canceling their subscriptions to stuff, when they're coming out saying, we're not going to be continue buying this stuff. When some of them are even saying, you know what? Uh, I could drop $200 on a 3d printer 
and be able to print out every single one of these figures myself and save money. You have uh, fans and audiences that actually want to go do that instead of actually giving Games Workshop money. That's going to hurt their bottom dollar. That's going to make that's going to hurt them where it actually matters. And I know Games Workshop is very big right now. Games Workshop has a lot of money, I, but I don't know how much they can actually afford to take hits like this, especially when you have this going on. Games Workshop CFO sells two thirds of her shares amid growing Warhammer boycott. That's right. Now, before I get too deep into this, the CFO has announced back, uh, I want to say a few months ago, that she will be resigning from her uh, position as of right now. I think it was about mid-2023 that she announced that. Uh, so she is an outgoing CFO. She is no longer like a big part of the project. She's no longer a big part of the company. But the thing is, though, when your chief financial officer, you know, the person that helps out with a lot of the money, as they're going out, sells off two thirds of her stake and the actual company that you, she worked for for 27 years, by the way, it doesn't ring d d well wishes here. That actually is kind of terrifying. And that tells you that some of the people at the very top understand that what's going on right now will hurt the company outright. And you start getting into this. Rachel Tong, the chief financial officer, CFO of Games Workshop, sold two thirds of her stake in the company worth approximately $865,000 as hobbyists have begun canceling their Warhammer Plus subscription and have indicated they will boycott the company. Now, you could just say, well, she's a leaving person. She's going out. But you also have to realize the timing of all this. She still has roughly a, a half her tenure left to do. Left to do. She has uh, still about half a year, maybe a few more months to fulfill her entire tenure and before she actually leaves the company outright. So amidst all this controversy, amidst all this chaos that's going on right now with Games Workshop, you have her dropping two thirds of her stake two thirds of her actual worth within the company. That's not signs of, I have faith in where this company is going. That's signs of, I don't like where this company is going. I don't think what's going to happen is actually going to help my bottom dollar. So I'm getting out while I can. You see this a lot. Okay. You have all sorts of people that for Disney, for example, I know it's a different style of company, but follow me here. A lot of former Disney employees and former Disney executives still have tons of Disney stock, even when they are gone, they barely ever drop that stuff. You had Nelson Peltz, you know that that guy that was uh, the activist investor. He tanged up with Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter has not worked for Disney outright now for about mm, I want to say it's a year and a half, maybe a little bit lo less time than that. He got kicked out. He was formerly the executive of Marvel. He then went to just uh, do other stuff at Marvel, no longer like the president that ended up going to Kevin Foggy. And then he got fired, makes a bunch of layoffs, but he kept all of his stock. He had a large chunk of stock. He was a former executive member over at Disney, and yet he still had tons of stock, Disney stock in his possession. It isn't something that you normally see from an executive to actually drop a lot of the stock outright. So we have somebody who is their chief financial officer who might be leaving, dropping this stock it tells the audience and it tells the people that are actually watching this that people at the up tops don't have faith. People at the up tops are seeing what's going on here, are actually seeing the controversy, are actually seeing some of the things that are happening and going like, maybe we should be not investing in this anymore. Because even if you're leaving, okay, she's a 27-year veteran. And you can scroll down here, you can even see like, the all, all around thing. Like she's a 27 year veteran. This is her going away thing. This is when they talked about her. She's not set to actually leave the company until September of 2024. 27 years at this company. You're now leaving. You announced this last year, about halfway through last year that you're leaving whatnot. And as this controversy sparks, you drop your stock. You drop two thirds of your stock. Now, she might not have had a whole lot of stock. Well, actually, take that back. She had a lot of stock. She had eight hundred. She had eight hundred thousand dollars worth of stock in here. That's a lot of money in one company. That's two thirds of her stock gone. That that's a lot gone right there. 
yes, she'll be keeping a little bit because maybe she has some hope that it might rebound, but 27 years here, and now you drop this much stock, something doesn't pass a sniff test, and that's something that people need to realize. When something's not passing your sniff test, if something's not sitting right in your stomach, when you're seeing these stuff you know, line up with the controversy right now is the major controversy right now. When you're seeing customers say they're wanting to, you know, boycott, they don't want to participate anymore. They want to go somewhere else. They want to make their own figures from now on and not actually give Games Workshop their money. When you're seeing this all play out, when you're seeing Games Workshop, former employees attack them, when you see the 40K fan site attacking fans, and then you see the executive starting to drop some sock, there is no faith in this company right now, and it's something that I can't blame. Don't mess around with the customers. Don't screw around with your customer base. Your customer base, especially when it comes to Warhammer 40K, will drop thousands of dollars. They're dropping thousands of dollars on an army. These armies are worth thousands, tens of thousands. And now you have them saying, some of them saying that they're done. They'll sell off their army. They won't participate anymore. That's money taken away from Games Workshop. That's money taken away from 40K. That's important revenue that, again, 40K and Games Workshop might be a behemoth of a company right now because of how popular it's become. But it doesn't take much for a behemoth of a company to become a middling company. I, I just got to be honest with you guys. It doesn't take much, especially when, you're when your barrier to entry is so high. That is a major problem that, they're going to have to try to figure out. I don't know what's going to happen with Games Workshop in the end. I don't know how long this controversy is actually going to play out. But the big thing we've learned from all this is don't ever go against your customer base. Your customer is the most important thing to any business. And when you start going against them, when you start attacking them, when you start berating them, when you start having all this stuff go down, especially in a company that has a barrier to entry so high, the end result isn't going to be good. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it up, friends. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.